Today in this video, you are gonna find out all the information that you need to know before you buy this bike. Hello my fellow riders and welcome back to Riding Reviews. Today we're gonna to be doing a review on the Keyway Superlight SE Edition. Now we're gonna be doing this the same way we normally do, spec design, comfort, cost of riding, pros and cons, and there may be a test ride in there somewhere. So there will be a link in the description for the standard version, um, and it'll be up there somewhere, just so that you can do a comparison of the two bikes yourself before you decide to go ahead and buy. The only physical difference between this one and the standard edition Superlight is a little bit of bling. And a little bit of bling for a hundred pound difference, is it worth it? That's something you will have to decide yourself and you will find it out by the end of the video. Spec. Now this bike does have a 125cc lump in it and it is a older engine. So it is an overhead valve engine compared to quite a lot of the new Euro 5 bikes which are overhead cam or even double overhead cam. So this one is a single cylinder, four stroke, two valve, overhead valve engine. You're looking at somewhere in the region of 10 horsepower or 10.9 I believe it is and this is 7.8 kilowatts of power. Torque, you should be looking at around a 10 newton meters worth of torque and for a 125cc this is about average. Now because it is Euro 5 specification and Euro 5 compliant, this means that it has to have fuel injection, which it does, and it has to have combined braking, meaning you put your foot on the back brake and it sends 25% of the pressure to the front. Also with Euro 5, um, it has to have a catalytic converter. So this one does, and it is just there, under there. I did uh, talk to somebody with a Euro 4 bike, we haven't seen one in a while uh, the other day, and he checked, and his one doesn't have that. So it's definitely a change. How much emissions change that makes, and uh, miles per gallon, and uh, speed, and all that sort of stuff, nobody really knows, because nobody's done a full look into it. This bike does come with 16 inch wheels on the front and 15 inch wheels on the back. It has got combined braking, as I said, but they're hydraulic front and back discs. Double horn, the horn on this is really, really loud. The tank holds 15 litres and this should get you somewhere in the region of 350 to 400 ish miles. There's a lot of factors that can affect your miles per gallon, but that is on a good day on a flat at ideal conditions. So realistically, probably the 350. Speed wise, you should be able to get 60 miles an hour at this once it's run in. Maybe a touch more, but it is a heavy bike. So you're not gonna be able to get the speeds of like a Zonti's G1 or a Keyway RKF. But if you're buying this sort of bike, generally you're not going for out and out speed you go in for the look. Design. So this bike is made to look like a small capacity Harley Davidson. It has a Harley switch gears, which are the same as the modern ones, probably not the same as the older ones. It has a look and feel of the Harley Davidson, obviously without the price tag, and it is not a Harley Davidson. But they are, what? £15,000 for the cheapest one. This one is a lot less. Now we're not going to compare this to a Harley Davidson because that is a pointless endeavour. We are going to compare this to say either the Sinus Hoodlum, the Lexmoto Michigan or the Keyway k -Lite. There are a couple of other bikes uh, which were Euro 4 which haven't been brought through and believe it or not I couldn't find a up-to-date cruiser from any of the Japanese people, Japanese makes for a 125 spec Euro 5. They may be releasing them later but they haven't released them yet. So versus the standard super light, this one comes with obviously an additional screen, mirrors are different, the 
bags are different or this one has bags that the other one doesn't it has a little bit of a skirt on the seat and it has the crash bars on the front is this worth an additional hundred pounds if you bought them separately i would imagine you're looking around 150 to 200 pounds mark and they're fitted so cost effectively they're worth buying with the bike does it make the bike look better that's really something that you need to decide yourself so yes if you compare this to say the sinus hoodlum or the lex moto michigan they're the same bike with the lex moto michigan and the sinus hoodlum and even to a certain extent the keyway k light you're going more on the spec with that bike because they have a better spec than this one but this one is the only one that looks like a Harley Davidson. And if that's the look you're going for, you can't get anything else on the market that has that look. So it doesn't look like this year, or Euro 5 wise, the Japanese are even trying with the 125cc market. Comfort. For me in particular, I have a bit of a back injury and I have a shoulder injury, so this one for me isn't that comfortable. But on average, I am told quite a lot that this is a very comfortable bike. So seating position wise, your legs are up. I'm five foot nine and I can very easily flat foot this. So I would imagine five four, you could just flat foot it. Any smaller than that, you could still ride it because you're one wheel in it, or one foot in it, sorry. It has got the push to cancel uh, indicators and it has a Harley Davidson switch gear. The miles per hour on this one are in yellow, which is the smaller, so this is designed for the European mar market more than it is for us. Kilometers an hour are white. The fuel gauge is on the tank. You can very easily have another person on the back and it will be really, really comfortable for them. The seat is really nice and soft and you should be able to ride this for quite a long time without having an issue. My issue with this is mine issue. It's not actually an issue with a bike, but holding my arms like this for an extended period of times and leaning back on my back. I, I have a torn rotator cuff in my shoulder, so that aggravates that. Um, and I have a little bit of a, a back issue as well. And sitting like that isn't massively comfortable for me. But I used to be a power lifter. I damaged myself. And for somebody that hasn't damaged herself, it shouldn't be an issue. Long duration rides, as I said previously, this will be quite nice for that. It's not as fast as some of the other Chinese bikes out there. But again, you're not buying it for out and out speed. You are buying it for the look. Dimensions. The length of the bike from the front to the back is 2,260 millimeters. The width from handlebar to handlebar is 800 mil. The seat height is, uh, the total height is 1110 millimeters. Ground clearance is 120 liters on the tank is 15 and the seat height is 730 mil. Wheelbase is 1440. Cost of riding. This bike comes in at 2,499 pounds on the road. Take, for example, the Keyway Standard Edition, that is 2,399, and some other models just so you can get a comparison. The K Lite is 2,499 plus 100 pounds on the, on the road. The Sinus Hoodlum is 2,399 pounds plus 100 pounds on the road. And the cheapest one on the list is the Lexmoto Michigan, which is 2,199 pounds on the road. So your first year's tax is free with the bike. Your second year's tax will be £21. You do not have to have an MOT on this bike for three years because it is a new vehicle. Insurance should be somewhere in the region of £350 to £500 depending on your own circumstances. There is a lot of things that can adjust your premium. Usually makes them go up, but things like a brick garage uh, to 
turn it to a lamppost, it is going to be cheaper in a brick garage. Your age, your experience, where you're going, all this sort of stuff has an effect in your insurance. And if you do not tell your insurance the correct information, they will um, potentially cancel your insurance or when you go to make a claim, they will not pay out. So on that note, the cheapest quote on this bike I can find was from Bike Shore and there's no point in doing it for me because it's like 110 pounds but on average they're saying 350 to 500 pounds if you do go with bike shore and hit the link in the description then they give me a little bit of a kickback and that helps me out by uh, helping me pay for some of the stuff that i have to pay for whilst doing my videos so uh, if you do click on that link in the description it really 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 helps me out also remember if you are a first time rider you need to buy um, equipment i.e. helmet, jacket, gloves and a pair of boots. If you go for the trousers as well you're looking at uh, a starting price of about £180 to about £29,000 depending on quality. If you're buying a £3,000 bike you're not going to be paying £29,000 for the clothing. I would suggest wearing a helmet jackets, gloves, and a decent pair of boots. Not necessarily motorbike boots. Steel toe cap boots, I would suggest, are better because you can actually walk around with them as well. Whereas motorbike boots are sometimes a little bit cumbersome. Pros and cons. Now, this bike, you are buying the bike for the look. If you're buying it for the speed, there are other bikes out there that will suit you better i.e. the Zontis or even the Keyway RKF because they are faster, they have more gears and they are a little bit more refined. But there is nothing else on the market that is anything like this. So um, you can get second-hand bikes uh, from Yamaha. I think they did one um, that looks something similar to this, but they are not Euro 5 specs. So yeah, this one will run on E10 fuel, so you don't have to worry about that. It says it on the tank. The main thing with this is, is it worth the extra £100, I believe? That, that would be the main thing. Are you willing to pay £100 for the bags, for the seat, for the mirrors, and for the screen? If you are, then go for this one. If you're not, you're not going to be losing out anything from going for the standard edition. But again, that's down to you, not me. The other thing is, well, with this one, which is a bit of a con, is it's not the most powerful 125 you can get out of the minute, and it's not the most modern engine. So it has an overhead valve engine rather than an overhead cam engine. So that means that this may get a little bit more rattly as it gets older, but it is a proven design, and it has worked for a long time for this model, these models of uh, super lights have been out for about 12 years and they are the best selling Chinese motorcycle out there. So thank you for watching my video on the Keyway Super Light SE edition. This is the only uh, shape that the SE comes in because it has the extras. There are some other colours in the standard edition super light but yeah we're doing a video on this one. There will be a link at the end, so you can go and view my other videos on other cruisers. The only one that I do not have at the minute is the Sinis Hoodlum. Sinis, if you want me to do a video, there is a link to my email address in the bottom of this video, and we can arrange something. But to you, the viewer, thank you for watching my video. There is many, many other videos on my channel, so go and check them out. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated to all my latest content. Hit the thumbs up if you like my video. Comment below if you didn't, and tell me how I can improve my videos in the future. But as always, ride